Good morning, everyone. How are you this morning? Well, I hope you're doing great this morning. I tell you, in spite of all that's going on, uh, you still got a lot to be thankful for. And we have even more to be thankful for this morning. I'm telling you, we are living in times that are unheard of. And listen, let me tell you something. You hold on. I got a word for you this morning from the Lord. I'm Valerie Oliver, founding pastor of First Liberty Baptist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We are not your typical Baptist church. We are not your traditional Baptist church. We are all inclusive. We welcome and affirm the LGBTQ plus community and everybody, all are welcome. This is God's church. This is the way church is meant to be. And so I am happy that you have decided to join us this morning, wherever you might be watching, even if it's the uploaded video on YouTube or on Facebook or some other uh, platform, I am thankful for you. Listen. I want you to worship with me a little bit this morning. How many of you believe that there is something going on in the atmosphere? How many of you believe that there is something going on unusual right now? Listen here. What the Lord starts, it ain't over until it's over. Listen, he's doing something right now. He's on the move. Come on and worship with me now. God is not finished. It's not ending. It's only the yes. beginning. It's only the beginning. When God is in there. All things are new. All things are new. some friends along to just encourage you a little further. James Fortune. Help for someone right now. I know it's darkness. Yes. Just be dark. It's not easy yes. right now. This might be the hardest mm. season you experience. I've been there. We've heard But it won't before. last. It won't be too long. Because you are. Those are You may not see it yet. Come on, Israel. Oh, 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 look to the sky. Help is on the way. See, it's not over. It's, it's, not not over. Over. it's not finished. It's not the end. Your story's not over. This is only the beginning. He makes all the difference. He makes it. He makes all things new. Yes. With God. All things are new. All things are new. In the spirit, I said something's starting to move. Everything is turning around.
do more. I'm speaking this over your body. It's not over. It's not over. I'm saving this over your wayward sons and daughters. I'm saving this over your future right now. It's not over. 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 Until God says so. He's got my last word. I count it all just. Until it's over. Let me tell you something. The song says that there's a new season, that there's something happening, there's something turning around. I can feel it in the atmosphere. Can you? There's something happening. Woo! Let me tell you something. I was looking for another song I was going to play this morning and I couldn't get it to download. I said, oh, well, I'm just going to have to go along with what I already got. I looked to see what I already had, and I found that song right there. It's more fitting than the song I had chosen. Woo! We better listen to God when he's speaking. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when God speaks, he's always right, and he's always right on time. Listen, this is the first Sunday of June, and at First Liberty, it is our Lord's Supper Sunday, so uh, get yourselves ready to participate with me in the Lord's Supper. Uh, after the sermon and after we do the invitation to Christ, we are going to uh, participate in the Lord's Supper. Get you a cracker or a potato chip or something and, and, and a glass of juice and, 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 and even if it's just water, and, and, and sit down and have the Lord's Supper with me. Amen. All right, so I'm going to go on into the lesson. Woo, I'm just excited. Something is happening. Uh, uh, something is moving. God is moving. Uh, things are all turning around. I, I just, I'm telling you, listen, I can't even put it into words. I'm going to go on into the lesson this morning. Our text comes from Luke, the 18th chapter. Luke chapter 18, beginning with verse 1. And I'm reading the NIV. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. 
But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God, even though I don't care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, will the Son of Man, when he comes, find faith on the earth? Ooh, pray with me, dear God in heaven. We thank you so much for another hour of proclamation. The proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, I come before you as an empty vessel ready to be filled and then poured out among your people. I pray, Lord, that you will use me as an instrument in your service. I must decrease and you increase. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. 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 Verse 5 of our text says, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, the judge said, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack. I would like for you to meditate with me for a moment from the subject, keep on pounding. Keep on pounding. We have been singing the song, We Shall Overcome. Year after year after year, we shall overcome. During Black History Month, we shall overcome the national anthem, the Black National Anthem and we shall overcome. We've been singing these songs for years and years, and some of us have gotten tired of singing. Some have gotten tired of singing and wondering uh, 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 when, when, yes, we will overcome, but when, how long is it going to take, Lord? We keep singing and keeping hope alive and keeping our faith. Yet, when we kept on seeing the same old thing happening over and over again, we still kept on singing. We kept on singing and we still saw the hatred and the same old discrimination and the same old inequalities and the same old injustices. And some have given up. Some have given up. But the Lord sent me this morning with an encouraging message for you. For those who have given up and for those who are on the verge of giving up, the Lord wants to encourage you this morning. Follow with me, leading up to our text this morning. In the 17th chapter, the 17th chapter of Luke, Jesus had just explained to his disciples that there would come a time when they would wish he was still on earth. He said, there'll come a time that you're going to wish I was still here. He said, the time is coming when you'll no longer see me. You'll no longer see me. Uh, I, I'm going to be killed. I'm going to be buried and then I'm going to be uh, resurrected from the dead and I'm going to ascend back to heaven and, and you're not going to see me anymore. You see, and, and, and see, Jesus knew that, that, that his disciples would suffer greatly. And he said, there's going to be a time when you're going to long for my appearing. Because there's going to be so much suffering in this world. You're going to wish that I was here. 
And to this day, my brothers and sisters, even in our own generation of discipleship, we still await his coming. We still see his, 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 uh, uh, this suffering he was talking about. There is still a lot of suffering and a lot of chaos and a lot of injustice and a lot of racism going on. And we're still waiting for deliverance. And that's what he was telling them in the 17th chapter. But in the meantime, in the meantime, we cannot lose heart. And that's what he's saying to us today. He's telling them, yes, you're going to long for my appearing, but, but, but while you wait, you cannot lose heart. And my sisters and my brothers, in light of this extraordinary time we're living in right now, as we fight against racism and injustice, we have to keep the same attitude Jesus is telling his disciples in our text this morning. He's telling them, you got to keep on fighting. You got to keep the faith. You can't give up. This is an extraordinary time. Our young people are out on the streets walking and marching and fighting for us. And they are joined by people of other uh, ethnicities from everywhere, all over the world, even in London and, and other countries are standing with them. And they are fighting for us. And Jesus wants us to keep our faith, to keep on fighting. Let's listen closely to what Jesus is saying to the disciples in our text in the 18th chapter. Then Jesus told his disciples, verse, verse 1, he told him a parable. He told them a parable, and, and he told them this parable uh, that they should always pray and not give up. That's what this parable means. I'm telling you what it means before I tell you what it, what the parable says. You see, a parable is an earthly story. You, you, you know this. Many of you know this. A parable is an earthly story with a true spiritual meaning. It may not be true in, in, in the sense at that time, but it has a true spiritual meaning. And Jesus is using metaphors and examples. That the, that the disciples would understand in that day and time. So they would get the spiritual meaning. And he said, he said to them a parable I'm going to show you. Uh, uh, that you shall always pray and not give up. And my sisters and my brothers, that's the, that's the first thing he's telling us this morning. Don't stop praying. Keep on praying. Pray for our young people out there on the streets. Pray for them. Push. You know, you know what push means. It's an acronym. Push. Pray until something happens. Keep on praying. Don't stop praying. Even when it looks like things are getting better and things are turning around, don't stop praying. Still push. Keep on praying. You simply cannot give up. Never give up on God. God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. And don't give up. Jesus says always pray. Pray without ceasing. And then he goes on in verse 2 and he says, In a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. A judge now. This is a judge. <laughs> A, a, a judge, uh, 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 to a certain extent, has control over, or, or, over your life or death if you get in trouble. You know, they say it's the jury, but the judge is the one who, 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 will, who will guide that jury through the process. And this is a judge who does not know God. He does not fear God, nor does he care what people think. Now, there's something about this judge that I want to point out. He knew that he didn't know God. He knew 
that he had no reverence for God. He knew that he didn't care. He knew that he didn't care about people. He, 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 didn't, he, didn't, he didn't fear God. And, 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 he, and he knew it. 45 went over there and stood up in front of that church uh, 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 last week uh, stunting with a Bible in his hand. Standing up there to take a picture. Standing up there holding the Bible. I heard uh, 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 Al Sharpton, Reverend Al Sharpton, say I never saw somebody hold a Bible like that. He was standing up there in front of the church. He knew when he stood up there starting to take a picture or uh, uh, holding that Bible in his hand that he doesn't really have reverence for God. Who is he trying to fool? You know, uh, he doesn't have reverence for God because if he had reverence for God, he would have reverence for God's people. He would treat people better. He wouldn't have hatred in his heart. He wouldn't treat people a certain kind of way. He wouldn't show favoritism for some and unfavoritism for others. And just like this judge Jesus is talking about, we have a, a, a president who sits in the office who knows he cares nothing about God and he cares nothing about people, nor what people think. See, people know that uh, 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 they don't have any reverence uh, uh, for God. They know. They know when they don't care. They know it. So, so, so don't think they 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 know they don't know any better. They know. Don't think they don't know any better. They do know. They know that they just don't care. They're just mean and selfish people, and they don't care. And Jesus went on, and he said, he said, as we move on in the text. He's, he's speaking to his disciples now. Remember, he's he's telling them, you know, um, to hold on, to, to, to fight on in the meantime, because I'm going away. And you're going to have to fight. And he says, and, and, and in this same town with this unjust judge, there was a widow. A widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea. And the widow's plea was, 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 was one that we ought to be very familiar with. A widow, see, was, was in that day an object of indifference, uh, an object of contempt. Uh, no one really took her seriously. Uh, you remember that women uh, back in that day were already treated as less than second-class citizens. And here she's not only a woman, but she's a widow woman. And she's most likely poor and, and, and didn't have day-to-day uh, 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 -day necessities of life readily available to her. She suffered her oppression at the hand of her adversary, weak, desolate, and, and, and defenseless. And like many African Americans in this country, we have been oppressed. We have suffered due to the disparities and inequalities in this country. Like this widow, sometimes we don't have the very necessities that we need from day to day. Quality health care, housing, jobs. You know, things that, 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 that a person needs to survive. Heard somebody say, say the other day, we're not asking for charity. We're not asking for a handout. Just take your knee off our necks. I said it last week. I said it last week. Just take your knee off of our necks. That's all. See, housing and jobs and health care and, and everything else that anybody needs to survive. We have been widows, so to speak, in America. See, we've been like first century widows. And she said to the unjust judge, grant me justice against my adversary. But, but, but the text tells us for some time he refused. That tells me for a long time he refused. And, 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 and he wouldn't do it. And, and finally one day, 
He thought to himself, even though, listen, even though I don't fear God. Now he's saying this, the judge. This is a parable, but Jesus is saying what the judge is saying. Jesus knows people. He knows their hearts. He can tell this parable. We might not be able to tell it, but Jesus can tell it. He said, even though I don't fear God or care what people think. See, he knew it. The judge knew he didn't care. In this parable, the judge knew. He knew he didn't fear God. He knew he had no reverence for God and he didn't care. He said, even though I don't fear God, I care what people think. Yet, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice. Ooh, I wonder if you caught that. I wonder. He said, she keeps bothering me. Oh, good God Almighty. I hope you getting this this morning. He, he realizes. I don't care about God. I don't care about people. But this widow keeps bothering me. See, when you bother people, when you bother people, they get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. They get uncomfortable and, and, and they're going to first uh, try to make you leave them alone. And when they see that you mean business and that you're not going to back down, they realize they have to do something. See, see, this, 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 this judge said, look, look, this woman is going to worry me to death, so to speak. She keeps on bothering me. But because she keeps on bothering me and worrying me to death, I don't care nothing about her. But she keeps on bothering me, so I, I, I'm going to see that she gets justice. Sometimes, my sisters and my brothers, you got to bother people. Sometimes you got to bother people. You got to get on their last nerves and don't let up. That's how change happens. Bother the right people and make them get uncomfortable and you'll see a change coming. I see a change coming in this world. I see a change coming. I'm hearing people say I've never seen anything like this before in my life. I'm talking about 70 year old, 80 year old people. I've never seen this before. I've never seen anything like this. The young people are crowding the street. Hundreds of thousands across the country on yesterday. Did you see it? In London, did you see it? In other countries, have you seen it? All people, LGBTQ plus people, white people, Hispanic people, everybody is going around marching with our black people saying, black people's lives matter. And they are bothering people. They are bothering people. And we need to get behind them and help them keep bothering them. We need to do what we can. See, that's how change happens. Bother the right people. Make them get uncomfortable and you'll see a change come. See, verse 6 says, and the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge said. Jesus has said, did you catch that? He said, did you, did you hear what, what, what I said the unjust judge said? He said, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and give her justice because, because uh, uh, she's, she keeps bothering me. What he's saying is, uh, uh, even though this guy is unjust, he's going to still give her justice. Look, when God is in something, just like the song said, when God is in it, look, it's only the beginning. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Woo, God is in, 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 in this thing, and he's doing something. He's moving. You haven't seen anything yet. This unjust judge, God can make unjust people do what he wants them to do. He said, I'm going to see that she gets justice. And he don't even care about her. He does not even care about God. 
but he's going to see that she gets justice. When God is in it, I'm telling you, when God is on his side, he can turn people's hearts around. This is an unjust uh, uh, judge, but God is going to make sure that he does what he wants him to do, whether he wants to or not. See, this judge is unjust. He doesn't treat people fairly. He shows favoritism and partiality. He doesn't care about any justice. See, but what Jesus is saying, if this unjust judge can see that this woman gets treated fairly, if he can somehow find it within his heart to help this widow, then surely God will do the same. Surely God will, and he can. He'll see to it that we get justice. That's the word for us today. He'll see to it. If this unjust judge can do it, what do you think about our God who is holy and righteous and who loves justice and equality and mercy and love? What do you think about this God that we serve? That's what Jesus is saying to us this morning. He's saying, I heard your cry. I know, I, I know you've been praying, but I want you to keep praying. And if somebody like this can, can, can see to it that justice is served, what do you think I'm going to do? He's not, got, he's not going to outdo me. I'm going to see that you get justice. And look at verse 7. He says, and will not God bring justice for his chosen ones? who cry out to him day and night. Talking about prayer. Pray. You remember, he said, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. He's listening. He's listening. He says, will not God bring about justice to those who, who cry out day and night? Those who pray? Those who always pray and cry out to me? Don't you know I hear you? Don't you know that I will bring about justice? You are my chosen ones. Will he keep putting them on? That's a rhetorical question. Will he keep putting them on? No, of course not. God will not continue to put us on. We are his chosen ones. We are his people. We are the apples of God's eye. God will not keep putting us off. He never really has. It looks that way. Because we've been singing that song over and over. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. When, when. But he's never really put us off. It's just that he has his own timing. God has a time and a way. He does everything. He hasn't put us off. He hasn't forgotten about us. He hasn't made us wait even though we've been suffering. It's just that he has a time. We don't understand it. We don't know how it works. But he has a time. And Jesus goes on and he says to his disciples, I tell you, he will see that they get justice and get this quickly. They will get justice and they will get it quickly. I see some change taking place right now in this world. I see some change and I see it happening quickly. Do you know that the House of Representatives are already ready to introduce bills uh, uh, on the floor as soon as tomorrow? New bills, brand new bills about policing and how police do their jobs. Tomorrow, they are ready, they are already ready to introduce new bills. And they're not going to stop there. This is only the beginning. 
God is in this thing, I'm telling you. And when God starts something, he's going to finish it. He's going to finish it. This is only the beginning. See, I see it happening. That's quick. That's quick. That, that, that looks pretty quick to me. That's quick. Tomorrow, new bills, new legislation. Jesus said God will see that they get justice and quickly. Then he went on to say, however, now, this is the part the Lord wants to make sure you get in your heart. He says, however, when the Son of Man comes, talking about himself, that's what he called himself. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find faith on the earth? Now Jesus is asking, when he does come there, will he find some who kept the faith? Will he find some who didn't give up, who didn't throw in the towel? What will he find us doing? What kind of attitude will, will we have when the Lord returns? Will he find us continuing the fight? Will he find us pounding and pounding like an oppressed widow who refused to back down? She kept pounding and pounding and pounding the judge pounding and pounding and wouldn't go away. She refused to back down. What is Jesus going to find in us? Our young people haven't given up. What will he find us doing? Will he find us standing up for our human rights? What will he find us doing? My sisters and my brothers, like our young people out there, let's keep pounding. Let's keep, keep on pounding. Don't not pound. See, keep pounding and don't let up. Don't give up. Keep pounding. You keep on hitting a brick. You keep hitting it and keep on hitting it with a hammer and you keep hitting it and you're going to break it up. You hit it, you might hit it one time and you might see a crack. Then you hit it again, you're going to see another crack. You hit it again and you're going to see it split open. And you keep pounding and pounding and pounding. And you keep pounding and you're going to break it up into little pieces. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen to this oppressive government. God is going to break it up. He's going to pound it and pound it. And he's using our young people and the people on the streets who have joined him. Let's keep pounding with them. See, we don't, we don't have to tell our young people to keep pounding. They're already doing it. They already have that attitude. They are already, they've already made up in their minds and in their hearts that they will never give up. They're refusing to give up. Our young people are resilient. They are persistent and consistent. They're pounding and pounding and pounding. And let's get behind them and pound and pound. Thank you, House of Representatives. Now is the time to move. And they saw that. Now is the time. And tomorrow they will introduce new bills. Yes, they will. And it's not going to stop there. While they're on the streets, our young people, pounding. Let's pound with them. Let's follow the House of Representatives, our leaders in, in Congress, and, 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 and let's fight with them. Let's get behind them. I heard one of our young people out there protesting uh, was being interviewed the other day by CNN. And I heard her say, I'm willing to give up my life. She 
She said, I'm willing to give up my life for what I believe. If that's what it takes for the future of my children, if that's what it takes for the future of my grandchildren, I'll give up my life. I'll die before I give up. She said that. She said that out of her mouth. I heard it. That's the attitude Jesus was talking about in this parable when he was talking to his disciples. And that's the attitude we have to have. We got to be consistent and persistent. We got to keep pounding and pounding with our young people. They started it and we got to continue. Let's do our part. Let's pray and pray and pray and pray. And let's do whatever the Lord tells us to do. Because faith without works is dead. First of all, vote. And get people you know to vote. If they're not registered, get them registered. If you got to take them and get them registered, get them registered. You can even register online. Take them with you to vote. Give them a ride to the voting booths. Let them go vote. Do whatever you can do. Whatever you see, or uh, uh, somebody send you in an email. I uh, 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 got one the other day that said, uh, uh, tell uh, 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 Trump to, 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 to allow mail-in votes. I signed that petition. Do what you can. Do your part. Keep on pounding. Do whatever you can do. Let's do our part. If we want to see change, we can't just let our, 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 our young sisters and brothers out there on the street do it by themselves. We got to get behind them. And that's what the House of Representatives have done. This widow was persistent and she refused to give up. Now the House of Representatives is refusing to give up. And now we got to refuse to give up. I see a change coming. I see a change. Didn't God tell us a change was coming? I see a change coming. I don't know how long it's going to take for, for it to get to where it really, really needs to be. But I know that we're off to a great start. I see something about the heaven that has never happened before. God said, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Keep on pounding. Keep on pounding. Don't give up. Now is the time. It's urgent. We must move. God is moving. This is a window of opportunity. Let's do what we can. Let's do it and not back off. Don't let up. God is on the move. Something is happening. There's a new season happening. It started with COVID-19. Now, there are freedom marches and uh, deliverance marches and I've never seen marches like this. When I see films of marches in the 60s and I see them out there walking arm in arm together, I, I see them and, 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 and I've never seen them uh, do what I see our young people doing. They're singing and they, they, they have bands out there, and tubas and trumpets and, and drums and they're dancing and, 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 and they're, 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 they're doing all kinds of new things. God is doing a new thing. Let's get with him. Let's get behind him. God is in it. God is in it. And I'm telling you, if you keep pounding, you're going to see. He's going to break up the establishment. But we got to keep pounding. He's going to destroy the establishment. He's going to break it up into pieces. But we got to keep pounding and pounding. Don't you give up. 
Those of you who have and you got tired of singing, uh, we shall overcome. Get up and put on your boots and do what you can. You don't have to go to the streets with the young people. But you can do what you can from where you are. Get your energy back. Determine in your heart that you're going to pound with our young people and that you're going to keep pounding. Pray and pray and pray and pound and pound. Don't let up. Don't let up. Pound now like you've never pounded before. We have a part to play. Keep on pounding. Amen. Well, God bless you. I hope this message has blessed your heart. And I hope that it has encouraged you to know that God is on the move. That God is doing something. He's doing something extraordinary. He's doing something that has never been done before. He's doing something that we've never seen before. And I'm telling you, it's a new day. In America. It's a new season in America. You hear God speaking? There might be somebody who's listening and, and has never ever received Jesus as Lord and Savior. You need to know this Jesus of equality, this Jesus of justice. God does not condone slavery. God didn't tell never in his lifetime ever, never has and never will tell a gay person that they're going to hell. Man said that. God didn't say that. There are scriptures in the Bible that people don't know how to interpret. And they've been interpreting it wrong for years. They got people all messed up. You, you, you need to know the Jesus of justice, the Jesus of acceptance, the Jesus who loves you just the way you are, the Jesus who, who does not condemn you because of who you love. You need to know the Jesus of equality and inclusion. That's the God we serve. And he's inviting you this morning. If you have turned around and gone the other way because you've heard in the church that God doesn't love you, that God doesn't like you because of who you love. If you've been rejected by family, rejected by friends, Jesus said, come to me. Come to me. I want. I accept you. I, I have blessings for you. I have a plan for your life. Is there one? Jesus is love. That's who he is. What kind of love would lay down their lives for a friend? He calls us friends. Do you know an earthly friend who would lie down their life for you? One last appeal. All you got to do is, is say, Lord, you know, I, 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 I've tried everything. I've been in this fight a long time, but I, I gave up and I, and I, and I don't want to go back to church. And I, I just didn't see it happen. And, 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 and I don't want to know you because they said some bad things about you. They said you don't like me. They said you reject me. They said you're going to send me to hell. Well, I, I'm, I'm here today to tell you God didn't say me. Jesus is saying, come to me, all who are burdened and who are weary, who are tired. Just come to me and I will give you rest. I'm going to give you sweet peace. That's not me who they're talking about. That's not, I don't know who that is, but that's not me. I love you. Just say, Lord, I tried it all. Just, 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 just take me. 
into your arms. Forgive me for all my sins. I know you died for me. Save me. I believe you rose again on the third day and you're now seated at the right hand of the Father. Your Father. You could call him Mother. You could call him Spirit. Lord, Jehovah, whoever you are. As long as you know that Jesus is Lord, that, that he sent Jesus. And that it was the blood of Jesus who made it possible for us to be saved. Is there one? And listen, my sisters and my brothers. If somebody prayed that prayer, let us know. Let us know down in the comments. You can send a message to my inbox, my, my, my DM on, on, on Instagram, First Liberty Church. Let me know that you prayed that prayer. We want to pray with you and we want to pray for you. And when we get back to church, we want you to come and worship you. We don't judge. We're not critical. We accept you just like Jesus does. And so, and so, come to Jesus and, 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 and come fellowship with us. If you, hey, if, go where you feel comfortable. Go where you feel comfortable. We would love to have you at first meeting. But you go where you feel comfortable so you can fellowship with your brothers and sisters. That's part of spiritual growth, you know, is that fellowship. Well, God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. And now we're going to participate in the Lord's Supper. It is the first Sunday and that's what we do on the first Sunday. It was one of the great ordinances of the Baptist Church. Is to participate in the Lord's Supper. To remember Jesus when he suffered and died for me and for you, for our sin. The sin of the world, the sin nature. The rebellious nature that we come here with. And so, and so, participate. Get a cracker, a, 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 a potato chip, or a piece of bread, or something, and, and, and get some juice or something, and, and, and let's have the Lord's Supper. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for a word that enlightens us. We thank you for a word that gives us comfort in knowing that you're moving. And that you're involved in a new thing right now, Lord. And that there is a new season. That something is changing and something is happening. And that we need to keep praying and keep pounding. And pounding. And pounding. And never give up. We thank you, Lord. That you have heard our cry. And although we know this might be the beginning of change. We know that you are going to finish it in your timing and in your own way. Thank you for these who are listening. Bless them. Bless every family represented. And Lord, bless now what we are about to do. Bless us now. Bless these emblems that refer to your broken body and your shed blood. Help us as we remember you. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. My sisters and my brothers, I hope that you have a cracker. I hope that you have something that you can use as an emblem of Jesus' broken body. And I hope that you can have some type of juice or something so that you can partake with me in the Lord's Supper.
On the night Jesus was arrested, the night before he was to be crucified, he sat down at the table with his disciples and he said to them, This bread is the new covenant in my body, which is broken for you. And then he held up the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And he said, as often as you partake of it, remember me. In that same spirit, let us now eat and drink together. Surely he died. Surely he died. And we thank him. I want to thank you, my brothers and sisters, for joining me today. And some do not have a benediction after the Lord's Supper, but we will have a benediction as we normally do. Participate with me in the benediction. And now may the grace of God, the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all, now henceforth and forevermore. Amen and amen. Go in peace, my brothers and my sisters. And you watch God move. And you keep on pounding. And don't let up. Don't let up. God bless you and God keep you. Is our prayer.